Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Good day to you, my friend. Welcome to the Monday edition for Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks so much for joining us. Reach over right now, get your Bible, if at all possible, and join me as we're working our way through the book of Leviticus, chapter by chapter. My Bible is sitting open to Leviticus chapter 7 right now. Get your Bible and join me there, if at all possible. Also, get something on which you can jot some notes. Would you do that, please? With that pen and paper handy, you can write down four words beginning with the letter F that we'll give today, but also be ready to jot down our contact information. I want to put into your hands a free sample packet of tracks. Please, please have that ready. We want to become partners in you with us, us with you, in the work of evangelism. Well, younger people today are probably not all that familiar with the phrase 4F. 4F. Now, back in the day when there was a military draft and before girls were allowed in the general ranks of the fighting forces, back in those days, if you were called up, your number was called up, you would go and you'd have a physical exam by the Army or Air Force doctor, whatever, and you'd be classified as to your physical fitness. If you did not meet the qualifications, your papers were stamped 4F. That meant you were physically disqualified. Well, here in Leviticus 7, we're going to see a different set of 4F things. These are four words. Now, these words are not disqualifying words. These four F words actually deal with how you and I who know Christ are qualified to be right with God and with the people of God. Good stuff here today. Leviticus 7, get your Bible, get something on which you can jot some notes, please. I mentioned a moment ago I wanted to put a free sample packet into your hand. Uh, That sample packet has over 40 gospel tracks in it. This radio program is the radio arm of a larger ministry. Our main thrust as a ministry is the publication of gospel tracts. That word is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. You'll need to know how to spell it if you'd ever use our website. Our website, by the way, is BibleTracksInc.org. But we publish gospel tracts. Now, a gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. One of the tracts in that sample packet is this one. It's entitled, Good Soldier But Lost. Good Soldier But Lost. It's based upon the life of the man named Cornelius. Captain Cornelius, his story is found in the book of Acts chapter 10. He was a great man as a soldier, a moral man, upstanding man, a doing good kind of guy. But he was presented the gospel and his goodness, his moral uprightness, his soldiering status did not cut the mustard when it came to being prepared for heaven. This gospel track goes very clearly, very simply into the fact that good works and religion does not save. And why? Because salvation is a free gift. Good soldier, but lost. A great gospel tract. As a matter of fact, this tract goes out literally by the thousands, many a military person in all branches of the military of our country have received this tract and continue to receive it. Good soldier, but lost. Listen, we want to put that free sample packet into your hand. I can't do it though, unless you give us your name and mailing address. Would you Please be prepared when at the end of the program, my announcer gives our contact information or just use, again, our website, BibleTracksInc.org. 
Well, if your Bible's open there to the book of Leviticus, jump with me. We're going to be jumping around a little bit. Beginning at verses 1 and 2, the Bible says this, Likewise, this is the law of the trespass offering. It is most holy. In the place where they kill the burnt offering shall they kill the trespass offering, and the blood thereof shall be sprinkled around about the altar. Going to verse 11 now. And this is the law of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which he shall offer unto the Lord. Go to verse 15, please. The flesh of the sacrifice of the peace offering for thanksgiving shall be eaten the same day that it is offered. I'm going now to verses 22 and 23. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Ye shall eat no manner of fat of ox or of sheep or of goat. Verse 26 says, Moreover, ye shall eat no manner of blood. And now I'm jumping over to verse 35. It says this, This is the portion of the anointing of Aaron and the anointing of his sons out of the offerings of the Lord made by fire. We'll just stop right there. Now, I always find it difficult to select which verses to read as we're going through our chapter series. There's just no way for me to read enough to really give you a flavor of all that's in these chapters. But chapter 7 is the ending chapter of God's instructions on the key sacrifices. If you were to go to the very last verse of chapter 7, we're told there that God gave all these instructions to Moses while he was still on Mount Sinai. Well, I promised four words beginning with the letter F, didn't I? Oh, they're all here. Uh, well, the words are not here, but each one of the words are going to be a label for one of the four sections of chapter 7. Let me begin to give them to you right now. Jot them down. The first word is the word friendship. Friendship based upon verses 1 through 10. You see, those verses talk about the trespass offering. The trespass offering was a unique kind of the sin offering. There were two kinds of sin offering, the trespass offering and the sin offering. The sin offering placed its emphasis on the fact that the person doing the offering could be purified before God could be purified. But the trespass offering placed its emphasis on the fact that all the involved parties, all the one who did the sin and all who were damaged by the sin, they were now satisfied. This trespass offering often involved reparations to the offended person. Now, through these, this trespass offering, the sinner was now back in friendship with God and with the people that he had damaged. So word number one is friendship. My second word is the word fellowship based upon verses 11 to 21. Here, the peace offering is once again talked about. It had been talked about earlier in one of the chapters. This offering is where God and the priest and the offerer ate together. Now, why? Because of the blood sacrifice of the substitutional animal, because of that blood was shed by the animal, now all were at peace with each other. Now, obviously... All of these sacrifices do point to Jesus. He completed, he fulfilled the law. He fulfilled all these sacrifices. But I want you to jot down this reference. It's an important one. 1 John 1, 7. I probably have enough confidence that you know 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sin and so on. But 1 John 1, 7 says, if we believers walk in the light as he, God, is in the light, we believers have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Now, dear listener, friend, as believers in Christ, we do belong to God. He's given us everlasting life. But our sins that we do after salvation, they damage our fellowship with God and with one another. Only as we keep short accounts with God and short accounts with each other can there be peace between us. 
and eating together in that culture, the Jewish culture, the Mideastern culture, eating a meal was one of the highest forms to display friendship and being at peace with one another. All right, so far we've had the idea of friendship and fellowship. Word number three is the word forbidden, forbidden. Verses 22 to 27. Here, the Jews were told that there were some foods forbidden to them. They could not eat any of the fat that was a part of the animal that was offered as a sacrifice. God got all the fat. But we're also told there that they were forbidden to eat any of the blood in any animal, no matter where it was, no matter whether it was a sacrifice or not. My last word is the word food. F-O-O-D, food, based upon verses 28 to 34. Now, once more here, Moses writes down that the priest and their families did get to eat from the offerings brought to the tabernacle. Years ago, my insurance agent was a pastor of a, of a Mormon congregation. We were very friendly, but frankly, we were cautious with each other, and frequently we would poke fun at each other over the fact that his group did not believe in paying their pastors. And I, as the Baptist pastor, I was being paid by my local church. And often I quoted him a verse from 1 Corinthians chapter 9. The verse says this, do ye not know that they which minister, that is serve about holy things, live of the things of the temple? That's the first half of that verse. Well, here in Leviticus 7, we are told that the Old Testament priest got to live, he and his family, through the offerings that were brought to the tabernacle by the worshipers. But then, back over there in 1 Corinthians 9, that principle from the Old Testament was applied directly to the apostle. Paul claimed he had the right to be paid for his service. Now, it was directly made to the apostle, but the implication is local church pastors, those who serve in the things about the church, can receive the funds for their daily living from the church, from the people they serve. All right. Here we have the four words beginning with the letter F. Now I have to ask my question, so what? So what? What does it mean to you and me? What does Leviticus chapter 7 have to do with you and me today? Well, it means this at least. It it at least means this, that my friendship and fellowship with God and men after I sin is all based on one thing, a blood sacrifice, a blood sac. No, not a fresh one because Christ died once for all. Sin, my friend, is a costly, costly thing. It costs the life of my Savior. When I sin, I damage my relationship with both God and men, and I must make that thing right, and it can only be made right through the blood atonement of Jesus. But when a believer friend of mine sins, They do the same thing. They must confess and get it right and claim the shed blood of Christ. But if they confess their sin, I dare not hold back my fellowship from them. Why? Because the very same offering that I need and I so desperately cling to is what they're using. How in the world can I withhold fellowship from a repentant saint when I need the same offering that they have? Friend, let's help each other walk with Christ. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.